Hi. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these uh, dream catchers. It's made of three components, a beaded section, a corded section, and then you've got the feathers hanging at the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to make all of those and then I'll show you how to join it all together. So this is what we're going to need. We're going to need some cord. Um, I've used six pound crystal fire line because um, it's practically uh, invisible. So that's my favorite. I've used a size 10 beading needle, but any size uh, beading needle will do. I've used some eight millimeter jump rings. Then I've got the frames that come in your kit. Okay, and then the feather frames as well. I've used a little bit of uh, hyper cement glue, but you can use any jewelry glue that you have. Some scissors, three colors of size 11 seed beads and a thread zapper. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start off with the corded section of our dream catcher. So you're going to need this piece of, of the frame, which is just a circle with some holes around the edge. And you're going to need about six or seven feet of your cord. Now, uh, the cord uh, will fray on the ends where you've cut it. So just use your thread zapper, cut off a little section with your thread zapper, and that will burn the ends a bit and stop it from fraying. Okay. So if you look at your frame, you'll see you've got some larger holes here. And here and then you've got some smaller holes around the edge so the larger holes are for connecting your dream catcher to the other sections and then the smaller holes are the ones that we're actually going to thread through okay so just take your cord and thread it through any of the smaller holes okay and then tie it into just a normal double knot like that. now this cord is quite slippery so this knot will want to come undone but we're going to uh, glue it closed later so don't worry about that too much now just pull it tight and then hold it like that with your fingers and then pull your cord sort of across your frame okay now you're going to find the other end of your cord <clears throat> and you're going to thread it through the next small hole from front to back okay and then you're going to bring it under this cord and you're going to pull it through okay so once you've pulled it through it's going to create almost like a like a lark's head knot sort of over there can you see it's basically just a loop over itself okay then you're going to hold that one you're going to find the end of your cord again and then you're going to go through the next small hole skip over the large holes and bring your thread under the rest of your thread And then keep going like that all the way around through all the holes so I've got another large hole here so skip over that go through the next small hole bring it under the rest of your cord okay and then you just keep going like that all the way around Make sure you keep some tension on your cord um, because it is quite a slippery cord so it will come undone if you let it go. Could also add some beads onto this cord if you have some large hole beads that you want to add onto this section you could do that as well or some gemstones you will need something with quite a large hole though because the thread is quite substantial but it's quite nice that it, uh, it makes it look quite pretty though. Okay, so we've nearly come all the way around. Just make sure every time you go from front to back and then you come under the rest of your cord. Okay, so the last one. Okay, 
Now, when you get to the last one, what you're going to do next is you're going to carry on doing the same thing, okay? But this time, you're going to go under your existing thread. So get your the other end of your thread. And now you're going to go through this gap here between your frame and your cord. Okay, so go through there. And again, bring the cord back under the top cord. Okay, so bring this knot quite close to uh, your big knot here. Okay, so now you, the next one, you're going to bring the end of your cord again. Okay, and now you're going to go through the next gap. Okay, so you went through this gap before. Now you're going to go through the next one. So again, go through under your cord. And then bring your thread through. Okay, and this time position you're not kind of in the middle of that section there. Can you see? Okay. Hold on to that knot again so it doesn't come undone. Find the end of your cord again. Go under the next section here. And come out under your other cord. Okay. Hold on to the knot again. Do the next one, go under the next cord again. Okay, next one. Now you want to keep fairly tight tension on this um, because you don't want the whole thing to be loose. So you want it to be tight, but don't pull it um, sort of uh, too tight if you know what I mean. So I just uh, just so that it stays in place really and so you can position this knot around because obviously it's not really a knot It's just a loop so you can uh, play around with it until you are happy with the position that it's in Okay and Just keep going like that all the way around Okay, keep some tension with this hand as well when you position your knot and then hold on to your knot knot your last knot and then the next one, you always go under the, that thread and in under your, your length of thread as well. Okay, so you can see the sort of the spider web effect starting to happen there. Okay, next one. Next one. Okay, just keep going like that all the way around. Okay. So when you get back to the beginning here, again, you can see where the next gap is. So the next gap is that one there cord under the length of your thread. At this point this knot's not going to come undone because you've got this thread pulling on it so that's holding it tight so don't worry about that knot at this point. Okay and then you'll see now we're going into the next layer so this will be your next gap here. So again you just carry on the same as before so go through that gap and then bring your thread up underneath the length of your thread or your cord. Okay, going to the middle of that section and then going to the next gap and so on and so on and you just carry on like that all the way around keep spiraling in towards the middle until the gaps get so small that you can't get through them anymore okay so I'm just quickly going to do that and then I will come back and show you how to finish it okay so just keep going like that Right, so now you can see I've come right into the middle and my holes in the middle are getting very, very small. Okay, so when it gets hard to get through those holes, you can just use your scissors to make the hole a little bit bigger or something else sharp if you have an awl maybe. So you can still get through there and do the next one and keep going until you either run out of thread or until uh, your holes just become too small to get through. 
Okay, I'm just going to go through maybe one or two more here. Okay, one more. Okay. And then on the last one, just to make sure that you tie the knot tightly, pull the knot right up against the knots on the side here. So you'll see that it becomes quite tight then. Okay. And then you're just going to put a drop of glue here and a drop of glue here to hold those knots in place. Now, you'll see that the middle section is not quite in the middle of my frame. So first you want to pull on this knot here because it could have come loose while you were working on it. So that pulls it a little bit back into place. But you can also manipulate it a little bit just like that to position it where you want it to be. Okay, just make sure that your thread in the middle here doesn't come loose in the meantime. Okay, so you put your little drops of glue on there. And then once it's dried, you can just snip off those threads. And then the other side will be the right side because you won't see any of the knots there. Okay, so now we're going to get onto the beaded sections. So for the beading, we're going to start off with the feather sections here. You can see I've already done this one. So in your kit, you'll have three different sizes of feathers. Okay, uh, they don't really have a front and a back, so whichever way around you want to use them is fine. Um, so let's take one of them. Let's take the smallest one, which I'll show you. So you're going to start off with, you need about six feet of your of your fire line uh, to do one of the leaves. The, obviously the larger one you need a bit more and the smaller two you need a bit less. So just start with six feet, that should be, that should be okay. Uh, you don't need a stopper bead. What you're going to do is you're going to take your feather and there's actually a slight line, which you may not be able to see on the video, but there's a little line going down the middle of your feather, which is really handy because that helps you to position this middle line here. Okay, so just go to the top sec top one of the top holes, the little holes. Ignore the big hole at the top because that's for attaching to um, the rest of your dream catcher. So just find one of the holes at the top. Come up from the bottom. So whichever way you want it to face, this way or that way, come up from the bottom. Pull your thread through until there's just a little bit left. Okay, go back down through an adjacent hole. Okay, and then just turn it over. And just tie an ordinary double knot. Actually, you can do a triple knot just to make sure that it's extra secure because there's not really going to be anything else holding this knot in place. So just tie ordinary knots, tie three of them. You can even do four if you want to be extra sure. Okay, and then I'm going to use my thread zapper to cut off this little tail thread. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to zap it off about half a centimeter away from the knot. Okay, and I'll tell you why in a second. So just zap it there. And then the little half a centimeter that you've got left after the knot, I'm just going to use the thread zapper and melt that thread into a blob. Okay, try not to melt the actual knot that you've tied because you don't want to damage it. Just that little half a centimeter extra because that's going to help to stop your thread from or you're not from coming undone okay and you're going to take your needle you're going to go back through your feather to the other side again so that's your thread there secured I mean it doesn't have to be terribly strong there's not going to be much weight on it it's just holding the beads in place okay so now I want to start with doing this middle sort of um, this line down the middle of my feather okay you can decide what sort of design you want to do on your feather. So you can, I've just put the one line here and a couple of lines at the top, but you can have more lines going down. You can see the shape of the feather has got sort of, um, it's got indentations the way that a normal feather would have. So you can use those as guidelines to put <coughs> more of these lines coming out towards the sides, or you can just have the one down the middle and maybe at the top like I've done here. Okay, so to do the lines, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up a bead and you're going to go back down through the very same hole that you're coming up through. Okay, that positions a bead. Okay, then you're going to come up through the next hole. So I'm following the, the holes that are along this line here that are down the middle. You don't have to, obviously, but that's just, um, it's a nice little guide. So pick up a bead again and we go back down through the same hole again. And keep going like that <clears throat> all along this line until you get down to the bottom of your feather. 
scan. Probably not going to go all the way now, just for showing you, but um, you would go all the way to the bottom. Okay, back through the same hole. Up through the next one. So just keep going like that until you get to the bottom end of your feather and then once you've put on your last green bead down this line so that would be down here okay now you want what you want to do is you want to come up through one of the adjacent holes so let's say this one here okay and if you look at my design here uh, I've got all the blue beads next to the green in the middle. So this hole here is going to have a green, I mean a, a blue bead, sorry, here. So now I'm going to pick up a blue, okay, I'm going to go back down that same hole again. Okay, this is just to sort of position my thread for now. Okay, but that will be one of your final beads, so make sure you pick up the right colour. And then I'm going to come through the hole again, which is this last green bead. So if you went to the bottom, it would be down here. But come through that hole again from the bottom that your last green bead is sitting on top of, okay, and go through that green bead, okay, so this is where a bent needle actually really comes in handy because it's easy to, to go through uh, the beads with a bent needle, okay, <clears throat> so now I've come, I'm coming through that green bead, now these beads can turn around in any direction, so it doesn't matter which way you go through it, it will turn into the direction that it needs to go. And then what you want to do is you want to put beads in between these green beads here, okay? So there'll be different different gaps between them. So sometimes you'll fit two beads in between, sometimes you'll only fit one, okay? So in this case, I'm going to just put one between those two there, okay? So I picked up one bead and then I went through the next green, okay, like that. Then I've got a slightly more gap up to the next bead, so now I'm going to pick up two beads. And I'm going to go through the next two, like so. Okay, then I'm just going to pick up one again, because my gap looks a little bit small there. Okay, then it's a bigger gap again, so I'll pick up two. It's, it's quite um, an organic design, this one, so you don't have to be horribly precise with it. <laughs> so whatever looks good for you. I mean, you could even leave off these beads that are in between and just put a bead on top of each of the holes if you wanted to. Okay, two beads again. Go through the next green at the top here. Okay, and then I'm just going to pick up one more and then go through this one. So this will create that line down the center. Okay. And then if you want to do um, some of these little branches, like I've done the one up, up at the top here, then you're going to do the same thing again. So now you want to go down the hole that is just under this last green bead. Okay, so go down that hole there. <clears throat> and then I want my little branch to come out this way. Okay, so these two holes are the holes that I want to go green. So now I'm going to come up through the next hole there. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up a green bead, go back down the same hole again, come up through the next hole, green again, go back down. Okay, now again I need to anchor my thread again so that I can come back through the same hole. So I'm going to go to the next hole along, this one here. Now I want this one to be, let's say, blue, so I'm going to pick up a blue, go back down the same hole again. Okay, so that I can come back up through this green hole and go through the green bead as well. Okay, and then again I'm going to fill in the gaps. So in here I've got quite small gaps, so I'm just picking up one bead, going through the next green. Okay, and actually up here I haven't got any gap really, so I'm not even going to put a bead there, I'm just going to connect it to the next green along. 
okay just like that and then again I want to go down through that hole which is just underneath those greens at the top okay so then I can go across to the other side and do the same thing again so pick up a green go down go along to the next hole this is why the crystal fire line is really good here because you can't see it through the um, the clear uh, base that you're working on just come up through the third hole pick up a green again go back down the same hole okay and then again you want to go into the adjacent hole put let's say a blue bead so you can go back down <clears throat> then up through this green into the green bead and then again you want to put a green in between each of these yeah and then another green and then I can go through this green okay and then again go down because when, you're, when your thread is underneath, that's why you keep going down at the end of it. When your thread is underneath, that's when you can travel along to the next hole. So like, <clears throat> now I want to fill the rest of them in. So now I just want to come up through this hole here, which doesn't have a bead yet. So I'm coming up through there. And I'm picking up a blue. I'm going back down again. Go along to the next one. Pick up a blue again. Go back and so on and so on, and then uh, go to the next hole again. So I can go to this one here and put some white beads on the edges. So pick up a white, go back down, come up through the next one. So it's basically just like coloring in with your beads. So all you need to decide is what colors you want to put where. Okay, and then you'll see on this one that I didn't join up the rest of the beads. I just left them uh, as they are. And then I've put white all along the edges here. And then just filled in with blue in the middle. Okay, so that's how you do your feathers. So I'm quickly going to finish those and then I will carry on with the rest of it. So now I've finished this next feather. So I quickly just want to show you what to do uh, with your thread when you finished it um, at the back. So you can see the crystal fire line is really good because you really can't see it even on the back of your work so that's really great. So to finish it off I've got my thread coming at the back of one of the holes and I'm just going to go under one of the threads that goes across from one hole to the next. Um, just going to go under there and then go through the loop and tie it into a knot that way. Okay. Now do at least two or three of these next to each other because if you just do one it's not going to stay in place. So do say three of those on the same piece of thread. Okay and then move along to another sort of thread bridge that you've got somewhere else. Not too far away obviously the one next to it. Go under that one again through the loop again with your thread and do another two or three knots here as well. And that's going to secure your thread and stop it from coming undone. Okay, and then you're just going to use your thread zapper. And again, it helps if you zap your thread off about half a centimeter away from where you've got your knots, and then just use your thread zapper to burn that little th little bit of thread into a little blob, which again helps to stop it from coming undone in the knot. Okay. So for the next section, I'm going to show you how to make the flower section. So for the flower we're going to do essentially the same thing that we did uh, with the feathers. So work with as much thread as you can work with comfortably here because you're going to need uh, more than one piece of thread so you'll have to join in anyway. Um, then we're going to start off the same way as we did with the feathers but just have a look at your flower and decide how you want to do the colours. So maybe if I put my hand underneath you can see it a bit better. So this particular flower has got 12 points, 
which works really well because we've got three colors of beads. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, alternate the colors. So do a blue, a green, a white, blue, a green, a white, and so on and so on. You can do whatever design that you like to do on there, obviously. And then again, you've got your small holes and you've got your large holes around the edges. So I'm going to do the middle section first and then I'll show you how to do the edging. So again, we're going to start the same way as we did with the feathers. So start off, uh, for example, wherever you want to start off, to be honest with you. So I'm going to start off here in the middle. So come up from the back with your thread. This is the same on the back on the front, so it doesn't really matter which is your back and which is your front. Until you have a small piece of thread left at the back. Go back down an adjacent hole. Okay. And then tie your threads into a double knot or a triple knot, really. Okay. Just ordinary overhand knot three times. Okay, and again, you can cut off the tail. Um, again, do the little blob with your thread zapper if you have one, ideally. Okay, and then you're going to come through one of those holes. To the front. Okay, so now let's say this flower I want to do in green. So I'm going to pick up a green bead, I'm going to go down the same hole that I'm coming up out of, move along to the next hole, pick up a green again, next one. Another green. And so on and so on. And you just carry on through all of the holes in the flower, just like that. So the only thing you want to watch is how you want to lay out your colours. So I'm going to carry on through these holes here with green. And then I'm going to do, let's say, blue here. The crossover I'll probably do a green here and then if my next flower is blue then I'll put a blue in the next crossover and so on and so on but you can decide whatever uh, layout you want to do for your colors and then to put a bit of an edging on there um, all I did was when I get to one of the points so I'm at the point here now my thread is coming out the back so what I did was I jumped across to one of these small holes on the outside okay come up there and then this one, let's say I want to do a white edging around it to make it look a little bit prettier. So now I'm going to pick up 20 of my white seed beads. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. So my thread is coming out the front. So I want to go through the next hole also back to front. Just like that. Okay, and that puts a nice little edging along there. Okay, then I'm going to pick up, hold that in place, pick up 20 beads again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, <clears throat> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then again, go from the back to the front through there. Which makes a nice little edging. Okay, and you can carry on with that all the way around, um, and then uh, you can come back into your work and then finish off your thread there. Or if you still have holes in your flower, you can fill those in as well. Okay, uh, and then one other thing to do before you're ready to assemble your final uh, assembly is take another little piece of your cord. You don't need too much, maybe 20 centimeters. Okay, you can see how it frays when you cut it, so that's why a thread zapper is really handy because obviously if you do it with your thread zapper, then it's not going to fray. Okay, and then what you're going to do, and now this is all going to come loose because obviously I haven't tied it off, so don't worry about that. So now I'm going to find the single large hole, which is here, so that's going to be the top 
of my dream catcher. Okay, and then I'm going to put this through there. Now I'm going to do this after I've done this edging so that this cord is going to go around these beads. Okay, so I'm going to just put that through there, bring the two ends together, and I'm going to tie a knot into both of those threads. Just like that. Okay, and then again I'm going to put either some glue on here or you can use some clear nail varnish as well. Wait for that to dry and then cut it a bit closer again with your thread zapper. And that's what you're going to use to hang your dream catcher. Okay, so I'm going to finish all the beading on there and then I will show you how to do the assembly. So as you can see I've now finished beading uh, the flower section. I actually decided to use only two colours for the petals and then use the white for the middle and then the white for the outside edge as well. So now all we have to do is connect all the different components, okay? So the flower is going to be at the top because I've got my hanging loop on top there. And then I've got my three larger holes here at the bottom. I'm only going to use the centre one and this one. Okay, and then I've got my um, corded section. So there's my knot where I've cut off the thread. So I'm going to turn it over so that the this is the, the, the nicer side where you can't see the knot on the back. So have the front of that on the same side as the front of your flower. And then I'm going to put my um, uh, feathers underneath. So just turn this around so that my single hole matches with the hole in the flower. And then my petals are going to, or my, my feathers are going to attach to the three holes at the bottom. So to join them together, I decided to use some jump rings so that there's quite a lot of movement in them. So I'm going to attach two jump rings because I didn't want the, the uh, quite a large section at the bottom to be hanging by just one jump ring so I decided to double up on the jump rings so I'm using eight millimeter jump rings because I need them to be quite big to reach all the way around the edge of my frame so I'm going to take one jump ring and I'm going to put it around the beads and into the hole on the flower frame I'm going to close that jump ring just take your time to make sure that it's properly closed there Okay, then I'm going to do the same again with another jump ring. Okay, so around the beads, oh, we need to open it a little bit further. Okay, so put it around the beads and into the hole, but don't go through the other jump ring because uh, you just want these to sit nicely next to each other. Okay, and then use your pliers to close those, and then you're going to do the same on the corded section. So that's one jump ring, another jump ring, so just through the frame, not through the other jump ring. Okay, close those, and then you want to connect those two jump rings to those two jump rings. Also using another two jump rings, so take one of those jump rings then you want to you want to make sure that you don't flip this around so go through these two jump rings in that direction okay and then you want to go through the other two just make sure you're holding on to your jump ring there and then you want to go through the other two jump rings like that and then close it okay and then you want to do that again Okay, so go in this direction through these two and then through those two and then close this as well. Okay, so that's those two components connected and that's going to be nice and secure because you've got you've doubled up on your jump rings. Now at the bottom here you don't need two jump rings because uh, these are not very heavy on their own. So at the bottom I've just used one jump ring for each of those. So just open it far enough so it can get into the frame. Take one of your feathers, attach, next one, So you can see that you're going to need quite large 
jump rings. If you don't have any 8mm jump rings, you can make them from either 0.8mm or 1mm wire. You can make some nice large jump rings that'll work just fine as well. So close the last one. And that's it. Your dream catcher is finished.